Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about a problem that a lot of people have faced when creating tables. I even see professional designers talking about whether to use, let's say, rows for their tables, whether to use a column based layout for their uh, tables. And I'm basically going to show you what I think is the best method to create your tables and why I think it simplifies this particular discussion. Well, the first thing is obviously I have untitled UI open in front of me and I'm going to show you what untitled UI does. Obviously what I'm suggesting is not what untitled UI does. Untitled UI actually works uh, in a manner where they choose or they prioritize the columns approach to create tables. So they basically have a bunch of cells uh, inside the table header. If you want to, let's say, remove a column, you can remove the column completely. If you want to add a column, you can do that as well. If you want to change uh, the different, just one second, let me just push this over. If you want to change the type of table cell, I can go ahead and I can say, okay, this is going to be a toggle or something. This can be maybe active or whatever it is as an example. So they basically allow you to do this. And this method is really nice. And obviously a person can see some of the advantages directly in front of us that if you want to add, let's say, uh, a column, it's much easier. If you want to remove a column, it's much easier. However, if I was to, let's say, say that I want to add a new row, how would you go ahead and do that? Or if I wanted to add, remove one row, how would you go ahead and do that? I would basically go ahead and I would have to select each particular item in that row in those columns and then remove them. Or if I'm, let's say, adding something, I would have to duplicate this, I would duplicate this, I would duplicate this, duplicate this, duplicate this, and then duplicate this. So obviously both of these have their pros and cons, but I think I have a solution that works really well for me. It may not, may not completely work for you. You may obviously disagree with this particular approach, but I still wanted to share it because I think it's beneficial. So what I suggest instead of doing uh, this table column row approach is, first of all, obviously, as you know, as I think many uh, UI kits already have, they already have a table cell component. Even if you don't create it, it's completely up to you, but ideally just create it so everything's consistent. But even if you don't, I mean, this does not affect this particular solution. So what I usually like to do is I basically, again, grab all of the things that I need from this particular user. So I'm going to go ahead and let's say grab this, grab this, grab the email, grab the phone, uh, grab the team, uh, just in case we want to have that and grab the actions. So I'm going to grab all of them. I'm going to place them on the right. I'm gonna, let's say, uh, basically stack them um, side by side. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is going to be hugging the content. This width is gonna hug the content. So what I usually like to do is very simple and straightforward, and I can just give a fill here as well, is I just like to create this whole row as a component. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a component. I'm gonna say this, is the, this particular thing is going to be my table, uh, my, let's say, team member item, team member row. And that's what I basically have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this here. So obviously this whole structure is in a different manner. So I would have to basically go ahead and redo this table if uh, from scratch. So I'm just going to grab all of these headings as well. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to basically auto layout them. I'm going to move them side by side. I'm going to say this is also going to be my hug contents. Now, as you can see, I have something like this. I already see a space discrepancy here. So it looks like I accidentally gave it a minus 30 or I didn't give it. It just happened. This is going to be my table header or sorry, the team member header. And it's beneficial to actually create a component out of this as well. The reason for that is that if you're using or reusing this page and you want to do some modifications, it comes in handy. So once I have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate these two things. I'm going to place them up and below. And that's pretty much it. That's my solution. If you want to add, let's say, a row, you can basically just duplicate it. And if you want to, let's say, add a column, you're just going to go here. You're going to duplicate this. I can duplicate this as well. And everything should be working normally. For some reason, it's not working here because this was not hugging the container. So we can have it hug the container. And then you can go ahead and say, okay, this particular thing is going to be, let's say, a status. And if it is a status, then we probably need something like a badge here. So I'm going to say this is going to be a badge. And it doesn't matter how many 
rows that ha this has. If I want to, let's say, remove something, I don't want this particular status. I don't want the status here. It's much easier to basically manage this table around. And the benefit of this approach is this is data oriented and data centric. Now, one thing that I do want to fix is I just went ahead and did not place this empty element on the right, which is why we don't have things aligned. But yeah, the benefit of this approach is that when you're actually, let's say, working on the front end and when you're iterating over certain elements or let's say a list or an array or anything along those lines, you're actually filling the table with data of that particular team member. We never go with a column-like approach when we're talking about, I think in most cases, when we're talking about uh, a table in an actual front-end scenario or in an actual development scenario. So I don't really know why we would do this. So once you actually have your components created, it's much easier. You can just go ahead, do whatever it is that you want. The one major benefit that I also see apart from obviously this being completely simple, not going into the table and column discussion and anything along those lines is this really works well with variables as well. Now, as you can see, if I go to my local variables, I have four users here, Asad, Brad, Mark and Demi. And I can now just start linking these fields directly, very similar to how a data oriented approach would work on the front end. So I can say this particular text is actually going to be linked to our name. This next text is going to be linked to our username. This next text is going to be linked to our role. This one is going to be the email. And this last one is going to be phone. And if we obviously want to link something else, you guys can go ahead and do that yourself. And now the only thing that I just have to go and do here is I'm going to say this one is going to be Brad. This one is going to be Mark. And this one is going to be Demi. And now all of the data automatically is updated. This obviously is going to have one limitation for most of my viewers, I think, uh, is that if you try to add another mode after, let's say, the fourth mode, especially on, if you're on a professional plan or a free plan, I'm not even sure what the limit is on the free plan. It's going to give you this error that if you want more modes, you need to go on to the enterprise plan. And that's fine. Even if you don't use variables, I mean, this is still a really nice approach because you can obviously go ahead and say that you don't want the phone to be there and you can just remove it and automatically that's going to work. You don't have to go to individually to a particular element and then update it. You can go ahead, add elements here. You can then go ahead and say, hey, yeah, I did decide that we wanted to have phone. So you can go ahead and enable it again. So I feel like this solves most of the issues. And with regards to the variables being linked and stuff along those lines, if you're working for larger businesses or medium sized businesses or enterprise clients and stuff along those lines, the way that I do with my job at Mattermost, the data and even with some other clients, the data that's actually there in tables is really important. And it really uh, conveys a great picture if it actually represents the audience that you're actually sharing it with. Since data is important and variables would not allow us to fill these tables magically and no one really wants to go ahead and duplicate the item and then go one by one and update these and stuff along those lines. Uh, and you want an external source to be the source of truth, like maybe a Google Sheet, you can do that as well and I'm gonna show you how. So I have a Google Sheet here uh, with some of the data that's already filled. Actually, let's just go ahead and fill one more. So I'm gonna say we have the rock and we have at rock, let's just copy that. The rock is what, he's a wrestler. I know it's looking really strange. Everyone is from the small square because that's my agency. And then just add a random number here maybe. So we have a bunch of these things, right? So now, sorry, I don't know why I'm not being able to spell the rock. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And we basically need this data that we have here inside without necessarily having to fill it. One huge benefit here is anyone can go ahead, your project manager can go ahead and come in and they can update the data based on whatever it is uh, that they like. And you can just go ahead and update it with one tap. In order for this to work, you can use multiple plugins, but I'm gonna show you an example of the spreadsheet sync plugin. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna copy this link, I'm gonna paste it here. Once you paste it, you can even view it in the advanced mode to see if the data that's coming, that's correct. It seems correct. And now you just need to update the layered names. If this is name, your layer name should be hashtag name, but you don't even have to do that manually. You just come here, click on this, it's automatically gonna update the layer name. 
Very similarly, this is going to be the username. This one is going to be the role. This one is going to be the email and this one is going to be the phone. That's pretty much it. Once that is done, you can basically select all of the five things that you have here. And I'm going to click on sync and it's automatically going to sync some of the things that we just entered. Uh, as you can see, the last one is the rock and the rock is there as well. So this is an easy way to go ahead and update your tables and basically have something being present here as a source of growth as well. And this uh, takes away from you relying on variables. So that's pretty much what I wanted to teach you. Hopefully this uh, video was very helpful and useful. And I'd love to think what you think about my solution and some of the approaches that I've shown here. That's pretty much it. I'll see you later. Take care. Oh, do subscribe. Take care. Bye.